Hey everyone, we had some huge news come out of Tesla Monday morning, so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's jump right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. Tesla said Monday that executives had informed workers during a meeting with Elon Musk that wages would increase by 4% effective in November for around 11,000 of its employees at the German plant. Tesla will also pay a 1,500 euro bonus equivalent to about 1,600 US dollars in December to offset inflation. Now, whether or not this is gonna be enough to stem the trend towards unionization and the inroads that union organizers are making trying to convert Tesla's manufacturing sites into union sites, which they are not just yet. Now, this comes on the heel of the big wins that the United Auto Workers Union won in Detroit, getting the Detroit Hourly Assembly workers will now make about $42 an hour. This is an increase from about $32 an hour. And compare that to Tesla, which this week advertised a production associate job for a general assembly in Fremont, California at $23 an hour to $31 an hour. So Tesla is offering wages considerably below those that are working in the UAW, the unionized workers. Also this week, Toyota said that it's increasing its starting pay to most of its U.S. assembly workers to about $35 an hour. That was up from $32 an hour, and that's more competitive, closer to that $42 an hour range in terms of employee wages, because also you have to remember it's $42 an hour, but you got to subtract union dues from those wages, and so that brings down the hourly wage if you include how much the union dues are so the united auto workers making traction gaining steam in converting and winning gains from automakers forcing them to pay employees higher wages now if we look at tesla's production around the world you'll see that the berlin factory the one in germany that just announced the wage increases they're producing about 375,000 vehicle production capacity for the Model Y. And then if we look at the California plants, they have production capacity for about 650,000. If you include the Texas plant in there as well, that adds about another 375,000. So considering all the production that could be impacted from unions making inroads at Tesla, it could make a huge dent in Tesla's production capacity if they force a strike and stop production, or it could force Tesla's hand in providing higher wages. Now, Tesla, if it gets away with, I just showed you that they're only increasing wages by about 4%, which is tiny compared to the wage increases that the UAW earned for its employees, if it can get away with this 4% increase and stop that unionization effort, that would be an incredible win for Tesla. That would show that it can pay its employees lower, lower wages and still retain their talent because they prefer to work at Tesla over some of the other automakers. Now that's big news because that could provide Tesla a competitive advantage against its rivals. If you look at the profit margins going back about five years, you'll notice that Tesla made big gains in this effort and around 2022, it became by far the most profitable car company even when you compare with Ford, GM, Toyota, and Stellantis. Gross profit margin for Tesla peaked at around 29% in 2022 before falling down in 2023. And the same with its operating profit margin, which peaked around 20% in 2022 before falling to the middle of the pack at 7.55% and 17.89% for the gross profit margin. Now, how much of that profitability increase was due to Tesla making improvements and getting economies in scale remains to be seen because at the same time, let me show you this chart. 
What I have here is a chart of automobile production in the millions of vehicles. And what you'll notice in to, from 2019 to 2020, a big drop in automobile production from over 90 million units per year down to less than 80 million units. And it's only slowly recovering. And you'll notice that Tesla's biggest gains were during this time period. As other automakers struggled with production with supply, Tesla was able to maintain supply of its vehicles and it gained market share, it was able to sell its cars at higher prices because there was limited competition. Other car companies were struggling to ramp up production and so Tesla was able to step in there and sell its cars at higher prices. Now this has been good news for all automakers as profit margins are rising across the board. But how much of that was temporary because of this drop in production because of the supply constraints due to the pandemic and how much of it is going to reverse now that supplies are increasing you'll notice here from 2020 to 2021 supply increased by about 2 million from 2021 to 2022 it jumped up another 6 million or so and in 2023 supply is up another few million units and 2024 it's likely to be up again another few million units as supply chain constraints have mostly eased up since the COVID-19 pandemic since economies have reopened people are getting back to work and production is increasing that's something to keep an eye out for if production ramps up again if Tesla's profit margins continues to come down you've already seen Tesla have to cut prices by several thousand dollars in several different rounds of price cutting to try and keep customer demand increasing it's having a harder time selling those units getting those units out to the market now I've, no, I've pulled up here the chart of production but what you haven't seen yet is how many vehicles are sold in a year and let me show you that so worldwide car sales grew to around 67.2 million in 2022 that was up from around 66.7 million in 2021. Still, if you look at the worldwide car sales of 67 million and you compare that with the production I have here of close to 100 million for a couple of years and then even in the COVID limited supply constrained years, production was still in around 80 million and multiple maybe 12 15 million increase or difference between supply and demand so there's much more production now than demand in the market and supply is only increasing as the supply chain constraints are easing and at the same time customer demand is only decreasing because interest rates have risen significantly making it harder to finance a vehicle purchase making it more expensive to purchase a vehicle so customer demand is falling supply is increasing and so that's not a good equation if you're one of these car companies especially if you're tesla which is trading at a premium valuation i would say a super premium valuation i'll show you that here so here i have pulled up the forward price to earnings ratios of the automakers I have pulled up here Stellantis GM Ford and Tesla and you'll notice Tesla trading at a forward PE of 54 significantly more expensive than all of the other automakers which are pricing in these dynamics right these market dynamics with increasing supply and decreasing demand and all of the other reasons why investing in a car company is unattractive and the other automakers are pricing in those facts but Tesla's valuation is not pricing in that fact Tesla's valuation is pricing Tesla as a technology company with excellent future prospects with limited downside and so if there is more pressure on Tesla its stock price is more at risk of experiencing a significant decrease compared to any of the automakers because their valuations are already depressed they're already extremely cheap all right so that's all i've got for this video that was big news for tesla if it can sustain its labor relations with a mediocre four percent wage increase that would be great news for tesla and tesla stock investors should hope that these wage increases are enough before i let you go if you've gained any value from this video 
please subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me make more videos just like this one.